Well, Razorback fans, that video that Hunter Yurchek, athletic director for Arkansas, sent out last week, well, he explained it on a podcast, and it didn't make it better. So let's talk about it on today's Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of the John Neighbors Show, which you can catch every weekday afternoon from 4 to 6 on Natty State Sports and nattystatesports.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday as uh, we're going to be having some Razorback spring football resuming. Hopefully get to see some cool things from the scrimmage today. Uh, baseball will be facing off against uh, Arkansas State tonight in Baum Walker. So a lot of things going on, a lot of things happening, and a lot of things transpiring and uh, it's been a lot of fun here uh, so far this spring. Now, I will admit, when I was doing my show yesterday, and it was live, of course, from 4 to, I say 6, but 4 to 5.30, 6, somewhere in there. It's a nice thing about being streaming is you never have to worry about exactly what time you get done. But I was doing it yesterday, and in the middle of it, I got tagged in a tweet from a podcast called One Star Podcast. and the title of it in the caption was Hunter Yurchek explains his viral video or his video that he posted on his Twitter account last week about Eric Musselman. Because we all talked about it, the seeing Musselman get on the bus and, you know, there's no caption to it other than it was a video that everyone could see that it was done a few years ago. And so people were like, okay, this must mean that Yurchek and uh, Musselman are on the same page. They agreed to everything, and they're moving forward. But then it came out that the reports that Muss had no idea that he was putting that video out there. And it was just a lot of weirdness, a lot of drama. And I keep thinking I'm going to be done talking about this, but when new developments happen, we got to keep talking about it. So each and every time that I think we're done with something new, and this is the newest thing because Hunter Yurchek went on this podcast to discuss it and to address it, and to uh, maybe provide some further information into reasoning as to why he put it out there. And I'll just play the video for you. Again, this is from the One Star Podcast uh, on the Podcast Network. Take a listen. You guys are exactly right. That was a video that was recorded a few years ago. There, That video was probably 30 or 40 seconds in length, and we edited that down. I had our communication staff edit that down. Um, as you guys alluded to, Coach Musselbin, much to his success has been rumored for multiple jobs uh, that have been open here in this off season. Um, and he's still the basketball coach as we sit here today and record uh, this podcast at the university of Arkansas. Um, he has been well taken care of in his, his past contracts or where he's had a couple of extensions in the past few years and six figure increases. Um, there's not, there's not a new contract in place for him this year. Um, but that, that video was just to kind of dispel some of the rumors that, hey, he's still our basketball coach. Now, this may change tomorrow. You'll have to ask Coach Musselman that. But uh, we very much want him to be an Arkansas Razorback. Uh, we feel like where his contract currently sits, he's compensated in the top 12 to 15 coaches um, in the country. He's earned that compensation and done a great job. And uh, that video was nothing more than that. athletic director trying to have a little bit of fun with some fan bases and naysayers that saying, hey, Coach Musselman's leaving. Well, he may be leaving, but right now he's still here and he's still a basketball coach and he's still driving the bus. I like that, Hunter. Have a little fun on social media. Why not? Did did Musk know you were posting the video, or is that is that your sense of humor coming across? Uh, that that is my sense of humor coming across. That was not something that was a coordinated or collaborated effort between uh, myself and Coach Muslim and my communications team. Did a great job, kind of cutting and splicing that video together from a previous uh, video we had put out a few years ago, and uh, just kind of reused that uh, as we headed into the Easter weekend. Okay. You know, that was not great. That was not what I wanted to hear, and I know a lot of Razorback fans did not want to hear. I'm a Hunter Juracek fan. I am. Um, but that, in particular, was a bad look. It is a bad look for various reasons. 
everyone knows you're a Razorback fan. You know, you know what you have been thinking, what you've been going through, what you've been contemplating over the past week or so, two weeks or so with Razorback basketball. I mean, even taking it back to the season, the season was not good. It was a disappointment. It was a failure. And there was a lot of smoke surrounding the Eric Musselman situation and knowing that uh, people were kept talking about if he's going to come back or if he's not going to come back. Is he here? Is he not going to be here? You know, anything like that. It was always up in the air. And so I kept waiting to see when the explanation would come out. And it came out even uh, quicker than I thought it would. But that is bad. Your check's response there is bad. I'm going to be honest. The fact that you do it in jest and kind of like in, in a joking way to have some fun with the other fan bases or some naysayers or whatever, you do that, okay. Down for that, having some fun, not going to hate on you for that element. But when you do it and you splice together an old video and you know the circumstances, you know that fans are not happy about the lack of communication from the basketball program and, and some we've even talked about on this podcast. Yeah, you got to address it at some point. And people have been waiting to have it addressed. They're already unhappy with the way the season went. They're unhappy with the way things are going. And when you finally do address it, you say, I was having some fun. There's not a new contract in place. Muss and his staff did no idea that we were that I was doing that. And then you almost take it in a, in a, as a joke. Like, almost like it's, it's just a big joke. So I am, I am just floored by this response. I don't understand it. I don't know what went into it. I don't know why you would do it this way. You, you're telling me that there's not a better way to do things than this? No new contract in place. And, and then also to top it all off, to top it all off. He's talking about his status. He's like, he's our coach. Well, he's here right now at the recording of this podcast. We'd like for him to stay. But if he leaves, he may. I don't know. We'll see. He may be leaving one day, but he's still here right now. Y'all. Y'all. I'm trying. I, I like, dude, I am trying to make this make sense. I'm trying to give benefits of the doubt, but this is not it. This ain't it. How? How, do, how does this happen? It, it is a complete and total epic fail by everyone involved in this. It's like you've already had enough issues as it is as an athletic department. You've already had some disappointments. Like, it's happened, man. It's happened. And then this is what you do? This? I kept thinking it was an April Fool's joke. I kept hoping it was an April Fool's joke. Because I hate April Fool's. And I hate the jokes. Because they're no more jokes. They're not funny. They're usually very annoying and terrible. Like the time that <laughs> Bobby Petrino got a motorcycle wreck. Like, I, I just, I don't like them. But this is just a total unexcusable move by everybody involved. And I am, I'm deeply disturbed and upset by it. Not that they care. Playing with the emotions of Razorback fans and, and handling it this way is just, it ain't, that is just, you can't have it. And the fact that you put that video out there, and then this was the response, the first response that you had to the video was just, ah, I, was just I was just fooling about. Oh, okay, so everything's fine? Well, yeah, I mean, it is now. We'll see. Maybe. I don't know. He didn't know I was doing it. No, it was just me. Okay, you may have had fun with that year check, but nobody else did. Nobody else did. There was nothing fun about that video if that video did not mean anything other than just fun. If that video meant that he had signed a new contract, that's fun. If that video meant that he was staying at Arkansas even under his current contract, that's fun. 
If that just meant that, hey, you're sticking by the guy and you guys are all good, even if you came to a verbal agreement, that's fun. But this, nope, I'm not having very much fun. I'm not having much fun. Extremely disappointing. I mean, extremely disappointing reaction from Juracek in this regard to that video. Extremely disappointing. It's clown shoes. It's making things worse. It made it made things worse. And again, I'm a Juracek fan. I've liked Juracek. I think he's done so many great things, and he's usually nailed it when it comes to his snarkiness or social media presence and all that. Like he usually has. But this was a big miss. And I don't blame Razorback fans for being upset by this. I'm upset by it. Like, what are we doing here, man? Like, what are we doing? How old are we? Is, is this an athletic department for a major university? Is it an SEC school that tries to take itself seriously and tries to pride itself on success? Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. But is it, it was like, this is what we're doing? Jokes? Fun? And th even though there's nothing to it? That's a joke. That's the joke. It's the major joke. Jeez, man. Talk about Bobby Petrino coming up next. Because there are some fun things that we can talk about with that. But folks, when you're uh, hiring for your small business and you want a quality professionals and you want to find them, and you want to make sure they're right for the role, then you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn just isn't another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that the small business that are wearing so many hats and might not have the time and resources to hire anybody, so that's what they help you out with. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockedoncollege. That's linkedin.com slash lockedoncollege to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, I thought about doing this yesterday on the podcast because it was technically April 1st and April Fool's, but there was other good things to talk about and more positive things to talk about, and so I wanted to wait until here uh, to bring this up. So it's the day after. That way nobody's feeling any sort of way and there's no stupid April Fool's jokes or pranks being played, anything like that. But... Now, I was thinking how crazy it is. Here we are 12 years ago removed, or 12 years removed, from the infamous motorcycle accident of Bobby Petrino. I'm not going to re regurgitate and rehash all of it, but it's one of those events where I definitely remember where I was, and I think probably all of you do as well. I was a student at the U of A. I was, you know, going, I was actually, I think I was doing sports talk radio in the, my very first gig and I was having to wake up early in the morning, so sometimes I'd go home and nap because, you know, I was just such a hard worker. But I remember I was about to go to sleep, and I got a notification from ESPN, the app, that said that, I think it was Joe Shad who was reporting on it, said that Bobby Petrino was in a motorcycle accident um, and sustained injuries, according to sources. And I saw that, and I would just thought, I was like, okay, it's got to be a joke. But then it was like, no, it's the ESPN app. I don't... Oh, surely ESPN wouldn't send out a, a, a story or a report that the head coach of a major university and college football program uh, got in a motorcycle accident and ha, April Fool's. They wouldn't do that. So I moved on to, okay, well, maybe the sources are wrong. Let's hope so. But then it all came out that he was involved in a motorcycle accident. Just a couple days later is when he gave the press conference in his neck brace, and it was so famous and without question, one of the most popular Halloween costumes to this day when it comes to college football uh, in, in that regard. You had the tumbling of the Razorback football program has really never gotten back to that point where it needs to be. You know, there's just a lot of stuff that came from it all, and we remember it, and we remember it well. 
But here we are 12 years later. Razorback football program still trying to get its footing, trying to get back on its feet, trying to get going. And one of the saving graces and the things that people, myself included, are putting faith in that this Razorback football season is going to be much better is by having Bobby Petrino as your offensive coordinator. It is incredible to me that he is here. Incredible. I have always adored Bobby Petrino. I've respected him. Uh, he's still my favorite coach that Arkansas has ever had in my lifetime. Uh, the the I mean, Not only just the success of winning, but the way that it was done, explosive plays, big-time offenses, performances, great quarterback play, rushing attack, balanced offense, plays downfield, and also a killer instinct. Games on the line, they run the play, they know what's going on. Like, they always took care of business against the teams they were better than. And with the game was on the line in, in a crucial situation, they always had the right play called and the execution and the mental toughness of the team. It was just encompassing everything about it was so great when Bobby Petrino was head coach. And I always just missed having him. You know, he didn't have that killer instinct mentality under Bielema. Certainly didn't have it under Chad Morris. And at times, you haven't had it under Sam Pittman, just to be honest. I've missed it. And I think fans always reverted back to the Petrino years, not just because of the winning, that's the biggest part, but also because there was no closure. There's no closure. I mean, great coaches have come and gone from various schools, and in most cases, there's always been the right closure to end it. There's been coaches that have retired, like think about Nick Saban at Alabama, giving closure to that. There's been coaches that just started failing miserably, start losing games, and the closure came in the regard of people wanting them gone because they weren't winning anymore, so people were fine with it. But very few times do you have a coach get fired from the school for off-the-field things, and it's coming off of arguably the greatest two-year stint you've had since you've joined the SEC in like a 30-year span. Very seldom does that ever happen, and that's what happened with Arkansas fans. Closure was never there. It was never provided for. He just kept thinking back of, man, if Petrina was our coach, this would have happened or that would have happened or that would have built into this. Like There was always that conversation to be had. Well, here he is. He's back. He's not your head coach, but he's your offense coordinator, which is the next best thing. And the success of this team is pretty much at the feet of him. Whether it's right or wrong, it's true. And I'm happy for it. I'm happy he's back. I'm happy fans get him back. We're going to hear from him tomorrow. I guess today, technically, uh, when this podcast comes out. We get to hear from him. Hopefully he has some cool things to say. It's been good seeing him back on the sidelines and in Razorback gear where he belongs. Uh, it's just amazing that it's been 12 years, man. 12 years since it's all happened. Let's just hope it doesn't happen again. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and to level it up at peak performances. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at all the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, you know, I wanted to bring up the basketball side of things in a positive manner because uh, I, I always like to relay things that I'm hearing. You know, not as far as, like, oh, man, we're breaking sources and we're breaking news, but more of, like, uh, things that, you know, seem pretty obvious and pretty evident, but 
with basketball and jo Josh Cohen being uh, committing to Arkansas as well as waiting on some other guys that they've been really working on and getting after in the portal. One of the things that I've heard is that Muss and his staff are really putting in the work and doing their due diligence of making sure that they have all the boxes checked when it comes to the players they're going to be adding into the transfer portal. Now you hear that and you're like, well, shouldn't they have been doing that anyway? Well, let's stay with me on this. When you're Arkansas and you're that, the type of program that Arkansas has been and you know that you had the year that you had, you got to make adjustments. Even if you have done things the same way that you've done it in previous years, you got to make adjustments. you got to change. And that's what I respect about Muss. He wants to win. He's not doing it because, oh, it's the way it's been done and there's no other, other thing. Like, yeah, I'm just doing it because they, they're the ones. Like, no, sometimes you have to adjust as a coach. And – you put in scouting reports, and I think Musk, without question, has a knack for identifying talent and identifying guys that are, can play the game of basketball and be really good at basketball and identifying also projects, guys, where they're like, hey, they didn't get the right coaching before, but with us and what we'll make the adjustments to their game, they'll be an incredible player. They'll be a much improved player. It's happened time and time again. More often than not, the time that they transfer from one place to Arkansas, they end up improving their game more often than not. And that didn't happen this past year. But I think with Muss and his staff, they have been really getting after it when it comes to the right guys, personality-wise, work ethic, coachability, all those things. They're putting an emphasis on that and doing double what the scouting that they've done before. And I'm thankful for that because they did have the issues. We all know they had the issues. We all know they had problems. They never need to have those again. And so I am appreciative that they've been doing those things, too. Now, what does that look like? I don't know. Maybe it's just more interviews with the players. Maybe it's more interviews with the coaches that they are under. Maybe it's more of a family, friends. I don't know. Like, I don't know what exactly all goes into that. But what I do know is that they are doing each and everything that they can to make sure it doesn't happen again. I appreciate that. I respect that because that's the way it needs to be. It's the way it should be. And hopefully for Arkansas' sakes and Arkansas fans' sake, it ends up paying off in the end because this has been pretty rough. Pretty rough. But appreciate everybody listening in and watching in to the John Neighbors Show as well as the Locked On Rage of X podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get up from me on Twitter, John Neighbors Show. For any questions, comments, concerns that you may have, we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.